Welcome to IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud. As a member of the team, I would like to show you just how easy it can be to create a fixed IP address, add extra storage, and work with security keys. The Account tab, followed by the Profile sub tab, is where we work with the security keys as well as the IP addresses. It's important to note that I must create my static IP address or my extra storage before I create the instance. Please remember, if my cloud-based applications use dynamically administered IP addresses, then I do not require a fixed IP address and there is no need to add an IP address. However, for the sake of this demonstration, I will assume that I have an application that needs a fixed IP address. I click on the Add IP link. A pop-up appears. I read the instructions and then click on Continue. The progress indicator spins for a few moments. And then we see the IP address success page. I close this pop-up. And in the second table, labeled Your IPs, we see the IP column change from pending to the actual IP value. Now, I'll demonstrate how to create extra storage. I must have the storage ready before I create the instance that will use it. Notice that on the Control Panel tab, there are three sub-tabs, Instances, Images, and Storage. I will click on the Storage sub-tab, and then click the Add Storage to Get Started link. I'll give this new storage a convenient name that I'll remember later. Since we're setting up another test environment, we will call this one QA Testing Pandora. I choose a storage size and then the format. Then, I click Next to continue. I verify these are the values I want for my storage. If they are not correct, I can click Previous and update the earlier parameters. These values are good for our demo, so I click Next. Before adding storage, I should understand the agreements and attachments. If I have any questions, I would contact my account administrator. I accept the agreement. Then, I click Next to continue. After the progress indicator completes, I see the pop-up indicating the request for storage has been successfully submitted. I close the pop-up and return to the Storage tab. Notice that after I added my first storage unit, the storage panel reconfigures itself. It changes from the guided layout to a dashboard view, and now each storage unit appears as a row in the table. The status column shows that my recently requested storage changes from New to Creating to Unmounted. When the status changes to Unmounted, it's ready to be used with a new instance. To review, once the storage has been created, I can then click on the Instance tab, then click Add Another Instance to get started, select an instance, configure the instance, and at the bottom, here, I can select the storage that I just created. So, in summary, I can add storage, but I must first create the storage, wait for the status to change to Unmounted, and then I can add the storage when I configure the instance. Now I'm going to talk about modifying the SSH key pairs. IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud allows access through a key pair. There is a public key and a private key. I have downloaded our private key in the demo entitled Add an Instance. They are named something such as IBM Cloud underscore John Doe at us.ibm2.com underscore RSA. The public keys reside with the instances and are always paired at key generation time with a specific private key. In this video, I will show how we can create and manage key pairs outside of the instance wizard. In the Account tab, we can see information about my account with IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud. In the table entitled Access, we see the security keys. The Change Default Key function allows me to select a key pair to use for all of the future instances I create. This is only a default. While configuring an instance, I can change the key pair to any existing key pair or create a new key pair. To show how this works, I will click on the Change Default Key link. The Change Default Key dialog box pops up. I click on the drop-down list. I see the available keys and select the one that I want to be the default. 
which takes us back to the Account tab. In this case, my Red Queen Security Key Pair is now the default key pair that will be displayed first when I configure future instances. IBM Development and Test does not force me to use its generated key pairs. I can add an existing key pair that I created from another non-IBM application. To demonstrate this, I will click on the Add Key button. We see a pop-up that allows me to name my key pair and then to cut and paste the public key into the large entry field. Let's give the new key pair a name. I'll call it John's Old Key Pair from 2008. Offline, I will open my old public key in an editor, copy its contents into the clipboard, and then paste it into the field labeled Key Contents. We click Continue. And now we can see in the fourth row the old key pair ready for me to use for my instances. The next function that we will briefly discuss is called Generate New Key. We'll click on Generate New Key, and we're back in the same series of pop-ups that I demonstrated during the Instances Creation Wizard. I must remember to save this private key. If I lose it, I will not be able to access the instances that use that key. After completing the Generate New Key sequence, I would click on Close and return to the Account tab, where my key pair that I just generated shows in the table. This concludes our demo for IP addresses, storage, and key pairs. For more information about key pairs, storage, or static IP addresses, please visit the support page and check out our video and documentation libraries. To learn more about IBM and its cloud initiatives, please visit ibm.com cloud. Thank you.